Hey everyone, I'm back. Uh, this video, I just wanted to address something that's pretty frequently asked, almost exclusively in Metalcore Reddit. But I know some of you are wondering, some longtime fans have been asking, why do we hate Slave to Nothing? And I've kind of tweeted about it, but I figured making a video would be more effective at conveying the true emotion. Because what I'm learning is video uh, is a lot harder to misinterpret than a post. So maybe YouTube is the place for me because it doesn't seem to go well a lot of times when I say things on the internet. But why do we hate Slave to Nothing? The short answer is we don't. Uh, the short answer to why we don't really play anything from Slave to Nothing, because that's usually either the first question or the follow-up question to why don't you like it. It's not popular. Um, Slave to Nothing to this day is the lowest selling Fit for a King record ever. I think uh, it even sold less total copies than possibly Descendants. Actually, Descendants might have sold a little less, but Descendants came out before we were signed. And I had been in the band for like eight months. Um, I don't know. It just never took off. And the whole reason we might have like some weirdness towards the record is just it was a weird time for our band. Tuck joined the band, I think, like a week before we got into the studio. So there was like no chemistry at all with us and Tuck. Like we didn't even know what his name was. We went through a bunch of nicknames because his name was Ryan. Uh, so we couldn't have two Ryans in the band, even though I everyone calls me Kirby. So looking back, we probably could have just called him Ryan. But uh, we went through nicknames like Fish, Scab, a bunch of us. So we were like more worried about nicknames for some of the record. And um, Will Putney's awesome. I just don't know if it was the producer for us because our band was just disjointed. We didn't know what we wanted the record to be, which is why the record... There's a lot of good cop, bad cop, like really heavy part, and then pop singing. One song had like kind of rapping and with a major chorus. Like it was, that record was all over the place. And what's funny is a lot of people considered the record like experimental and super unique, which I guess it was because we had no clue what we were doing. It was not on purpose. Like Bob was writing in one room i was riding in another tuck was riding in this other room we were all over the place it was just not a uh, not a good time in the fit for a king camp so that's kind of why the record is not played anymore and it's not something we like talk about or throw back to i mean if the record took off and was huge we would play it because that's a huge reason we choose the songs we do for our set, which I'll make a separate video on how we choose our set list. If you all think that'd be interesting, but I just kind of wanted to, uh, clear things up on why we don't play a lot of slave to nothing songs and, uh, why we may not speak about it very much. It is a special record because that is when Tuck joined the band. I think it would have been even more special if we had gotten to know him and been closer before we actually started writing the record. But, Turns out having someone join your band and then immediately going to the studio and saying, hey, you're the singer, write all your singing parts. Also, you're not going to get very much help on it because we're all going to be doing our own thing and we don't really know you. Turns out that's not the recipe for like an incredible time in the studio. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you have any other video topics you'd be curious about, um, just comment and like i said again i'll make a whole video on how we choose our set list because i think that'd be fun but anyways have a good day